Do you bet on yourself? That is today's question. Hi, my name is Brian Smith, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about recruiting and the process that these young men go through across the country. And maybe you're one of them. Why should you pick a particular school? And what's the process? Well, I got a little advice from somebody that might know a thing or two about that. Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings, this past weekend is just kind of a blur. Uh, as I finish up, I'm doing this podcast on Sunday afternoon, early evening. Um, Justin was nice enough that on Saturday morning, he came out to the Future 50 event at IMG Academy. It was the Under Armour Future 50. It's the UC report that prospects from across the country. And he's obviously working with the wide receivers. And he was an elite player at LSU, but was he an elite recruit? What did he think about? What did he pick and why? We'll talk a little bit about that kind of in order. So the point of this podcast is to remember that not every kid started at the same spot. Okay. Justin was not an elite recruit. And I'll get to that in a second. Some of these numbers might blow you away, but he was just an extra guy thrown into LSU's 2017 class, but he trusted the process. And I asked him after he'd worked with the receivers, they were going through a little break. I said, Hey, can I ask you a question? He said, what's that? Sure, man. What, what we got? And I said, if you could give advice to any of these kids on the field or off the field, whatever you want, carte blanche, what would you tell them? Justin hesitated for just a moment, collected his thoughts, and he told me, as he kind of turned and looks at me, he goes, trust the process. You got to go somewhere that fits you. And then he immediately went into, don't go somewhere because of NIL. And that'll be something I get to at the end. Just keep that in the back of your head for a second. Here are the few of the things, just kind of the snapshot of the conversation. Bet on yourself. Bet on the people where you're going that matches you. Not the logo on the shirt or the fancy stuff on the stadium. Not all the facilities that look glamorous. Not the coach that just told you what you want to hear. you got to go past the noise and look at the finite details, and there is no shortcut. you got to dig in deep away from what coaches tell you and kind of look at it. you got to go in deep and look at the players that are at that program. you got to look at that too. And Justin just kind of went on and on about that, working your craft and doing the right things on the field and off the field. All right. Um, to put it in perspective, Joe Brady came to LSU after Justin had been recruited at the Tigers, and he had some crazy training ideas, at least then. <laughs> They're not so crazy now. Justin and a couple other guys would kind of stand. We all kind of talked about it. We used to have the guys stand behind a the door. They'd open it, and the ball would be coming at you. Tennis ball would be coming. Different, different kinds of items. He said they would have different kinds of goggles on it, different things in front of them. You had to adjust. And I said to him when, when we brought that up, I'm like, well, heck, that's just like playing in the SEC West. Those DBs, man, they're on you. I don't care. You're good, but so were they. And he's like, exactly. You got to trust the coaching that you're getting. You got to believe in the guy that's going out there to give you this tutelage. And if you don't think that guy, at whatever position you're at, at that school, can really elevate you, that's a question. It may be your favorite school growing up, but that doesn't mean that it's the right school for you to actually attend college. And that was Justin's main point. We talked, I'm giving snap points here, just a little off each part. But he also went into the whole dynamic of just like believing in yourself and what you do daily. He changed his body. I was standing there next to him and he's never been like a massive guy, but his hips and his legs are a little bit bigger. He's a little more powerful. He's got no extra weight. He's streamlined even in the off season. He's grinding. They were going through drills, and Justin's going out there. He stopped a drill. He stopped a drill. They were going on, on about, like, making a step, hard step, how far it goes and all this. Some of them, you know, these are these are kids that are getting ready to go into their junior year of high school. It's future 50, like 50 of the best players in the country. And Justin was smart enough to just kind of get in there, and he changed what they did, and he demonstrated it. And then he got out there and just freaking ran the route. He didn't hesitate. He did not care. This is how you do it. I'm on my grind every day. 
and he showed it to the kids and they respected that. And it was pretty cool. So here, here are a few of the things to know about him as a recruit. Okay. I'm using two, four, sevens rankings. Just, just picked one, two, four, seven out of the 24 players, the Tigers signed at two seventeen. Justin was a weight qualifier. Dead last in the class and rankings. Dead last. He believed in himself, though. As far as receivers go nationally, not his overall rank, just the wide receiver position. 247 has him as the number 308 receiver in the class of 2017. I'll say that again. Justin Jefferson was number 308 in the country at wide receiver. He was a three-star, an unranked one. You know how they like the numbers. You're 85% and 90, 95. He was 79, 83. So he didn't even make 80. I mean, he was bottom of the bottom of the three-star rank. Like they, they didn't have a spot. It's just a random number. So with that. His sophomore year, he started playing a little better than that junior year. They trusted Joe Brady in the offseason, Joe Burrow and him and Chase and all those guys. They go through all those crazy drills, trust the process. This is what Jefferson did his junior year. And he even remembered the total. I said, how many catches? You was over 100 your junior year, wasn't it? He goes, yeah, it's 111. He was right. I'm looking at him right now. I looked it up. 111 catches, 1,540 yards. 18 scores, 13.87 yards per reception. But here's the best stat among all of them, in my opinion. He played in the SEC West for LSU, and that season, you know, they do these schedules out in advance. He makes the touchdown catch. Well, he catches a pass across the middle on a tough third down from Joe, and he doesn't hesitate. He takes off, splits defense, he's gone. They win on that play, basically. And it was a barometer of the rest of the season for this stat. For all the games he played, and they played in 15, he averaged 102.7 yards a catch against the schedule that had Alabama, Texas A&M, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Auburn, Arkansas, Texas. They played Georgia and Clemson. And he wasn't even the guy – it was just like getting the ball. They, they mixed it around. They had four guys getting the ball consistently and a running back that went late in the first round. So they they really did spread it around. They all trusted the process. Let's be honest about that. All those LSU guys did, or they wouldn't have been that great. That's probably the greatest offense in the history of college football, and I don't know if it'll be duplicated at any point, and that's, that's a debate for another day. But just on that, it's just the offense. It's just LSU. They got all those guys. How do you know he trusted the process? Well, he goes to the NFL. Minnesota Vikings believed in him. He believed in himself. This is what this young man did. Completely changed his culture. You can't get much further from Baton Rouge to Minneapolis, Minnesota. As a rookie, 88 catches, 1,400 yards, seven scores, 15.9 yards catch. Next year, 108 catches. So he goes up 20 more, 1,616 yards, 10 scores, averages 15 yards per reception. And then this past season goes up again, another 20 catches for 128, 1,809 yards, eight touchdowns, 14.1 yards per catch. Three-year totals, 324, 48, 25. 25 scores, 14.9 yards per catch. Justin Jefferson absolutely bet on himself. And that brings me back to the NIL discussion. He brought that up. He brought that up. He said kids are making choices on the wrong things. Bet on yourself. He said kids are trying to take money up front thinking this is the easy way. He was talking like New Orleans, you know, a lot of the kids coming out of there are poor. He, he was from Destrehan High School, great program, right on the edge of New Orleans. Not a lot of kids where he's from have money. He said too many kids are just looking at it up front. And we, we were talking about, we both heard stories about kids going to these schools not getting money. What do you mean? 
well, there are a lot of kids that I know right now that were supposed to get money at school X, Y, or Z. They're hurt because they're actually just ticked off. They didn't get their money. They're either going into the portal or they're trying to get it or try to fix it because they didn't get what they were supposed to from this money they were supposed to get. All that stuff that happened with the Jaden Rashada debacle at Florida, that, they're not the only school that's, that's happened. There's a bunch. And there's a lot of failed promises around the country. Bet on yourself. Pick the school that fits you long term, not up front NIL. We went over that for five minutes. And we were laughing about it because we know that a lot of kids just short sighted, don't have the right people around them. And part of it, you know, they're, they're 16 to 19 years old, Juco kid, whatever. You have to make decisions based on long term, not short term money. There is no exception to that. There is no deviation. And if you do bet on yourself, you may not be Justin Jefferson, but you're going to be better off in other ways too. Bettering yourself as a man giving back, that's what he's done. He didn't have to be at Future 50 helping these kids out. He's one of the best athletes in the world. Those stats that I, I just read off, those aren't some park league. That's the freaking National Football League. 324 catches in your first three seasons. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that's the greatest of all time or right there with it. And it's certainly not going to hurt his chances at free agency and just going wherever he wants and getting whatever he wants. He's earned it because he bet on himself. Final point, Justin Jefferson is who you should look up to. He picked himself up, figured it out, got to LSU, maneuvered himself to the best position he could get, Made it happen for one of the greatest teams of all time in 2019. And now he's an NFL superstar. He bet on himself and he's finalized that. Now it's just, it's just a great story to watch continue. Props to Jefferson for all the things he's done and the leadership skills that he has, the teaching that he showed the young men that I saw this past weekend. And quite frankly, you can tell just the energy he had. You, you needed to be there to truly see it. I wish everybody could have seen all the things that I did. It's just awesome. I wish more people could understand what he's been through. But uh, that was one of the coolest conversations I've ever had, and I'm, I'm really glad that I had that chance. So please like this podcast. Please subscribe. Please share it. And above all else, comment about it. And everything that you do, please, you can bring in anything doesn't have to be football when you talk about bet on yourself. We can discuss a lot of different topics. So please comment. Everybody have a great day.